So, by now you have definitely seen the outcry, the backlash, and all of the social media response to the Detroit Red Wings and the Ottawa Senators game from two days ago. We made our video yesterday talking about the Dylan Larkin, David Perron situation. We had talked about Matthew Joseph, Artem Zub, the Sens that got involved in these plays, and... Hey, look, I read some of the comments. Some of y'all are pretty okay about it. You listened when I said that we should try to have a civil and rational conversation. Some of y'all even disagreed, which was totally fine. But there were some of y'all that were a little bit, uh... I don't know what's the word, maybe a little bit overbearing, but, um, yeah, I apologize if you don't want to ever watch my videos again because I had a take that you didn't like. But hey, that's the media, right? That's sports commentary in a nutshell. So, today what we're gonna do is instead go over just a few updates in regards to the Red Wings that we are hearing in regards to trades. And this is a name that I really didn't think would ever be in this trade conversation, like actually going out there and exploring the options as to whether or not he could get moved or what he could get moved for. Today, we are heading over to the Red Wings. Oh boy, when was it? Testing my knowledge on the spot here. 2019? No, 2018, excuse me. 2018, second round pick. 33rd overall, I believe. Yes, that's what it was. I'm here on Elite Prospects now. 33rd overall by the Red Wings in 2018. Today we are talking about Jonathan Berggren. Because he is a pretty intriguing prospect and a young guy the Red Wings have in their system who has been pretty good the past few years. In fact, he's not even technically considered a prospect anymore because he already played 67 games last year for the Red Wings. But Jonathan Berggren is a slick, shifty Nimble forward, who used to play center in the SHL, but has since then moved to the wing, and he was a pretty good prospect for the Red Wings in the Skeleftia AIK SHL system, who eventually made his way over to Grand Rapids in 21-22, and has since then kind of teetered the line. He's up and down, he's been playing in Grand Rapids, he's been playing in Detroit. He is only 23 years old, so there is a lot of potential here, especially as a guy who, last season, in those 67 Red Wings games, had 28 points. He definitely did not look out of place. Now, sure, you could say long-term, maybe Berggren is not really, like, a top-of-the-line player, maybe he maxes out as a second liner, maybe he only reaches a ceiling of 40 to 50 points in a year, maybe he's not the top-of-the-line guy. But that's fine, especially for a prospect taken in the 33rd overall spot. Just the fact that he is NHL caliber, or borderline NHL caliber anyway, is a good thing. And we have made our videos about Berggren over the past few years, because this is a prospect that I have liked a lot. Especially when he was draft eligible in 2017-18, this was a guy who was scoring the lights out in the Junior 20 Super Elite in Sweden. So I always thought that he was a super underrated pickup by this team. However, even though Berggren had the great season as a rookie last year with Detroit, even though this season he's got four games played with the Wings, one assist, but he's a point per game in the AHL as well, we had ourselves this update from David Penyota that goes over how the Wings have been engaged in trade talks lately per source. Jonathan Berggren, who was scratched in today's Grand Rapids Griffins game that is still ongoing, is one of the players believed to be in recent discussions. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute. Berggren was scratched, and now we're hearing that he's going to get traded? Well, why didn't you make this video yesterday, Lego? Well, here's the thing. We had ourselves a little bit of a conflict, I feel. Because when it comes to the sentiment that says, oh yeah, Berggren is scratched today, and he's in trade conversations. Like, it kind of feels like those two ideas work off of each other. It feels like a causation type of thing. Hey, is he getting scratched because he's getting traded? Well, that's a dire situation. Why didn't you talk about this yesterday? Well, it's because the follow-up tweets from David Pano to say this. I'm also hearing that Berggren, Austin Zarnick, and Zach Aston Reese are likely to be called up tomorrow and could join the Wings in Dallas. Now, pause. Okay, that makes it seem like this guy's being scratched, not because he's getting traded, but because he's getting called up. Okay, Nice, but what does that first report mean then? Well, David Penyota clarifies. These call-ups do not change the fact that Berggren is one of the players who is involved in trade talks. And when you start talking about that idea, you think about it, okay, 23-year-old forward, pretty good potential, pretty good rookie season last year, all things considered, and he's still young, he's still getting better. Why in the world would the Detroit Red Wings be interested in trading this guy away? You've only seen him in North America for three years or so, and he's been fine, better than fine, for most prospects that transition from Europe over here, 
especially for those taken in the second round. Like, why are you trading away one of these guys that seems to have been a gem in the 2018 draft? And when you try to piece things together, it kind of feels like, okay, there's only really one reason why they'd want to trade this guy away, right? It's if some team is offering something that really is valuable. Like, the Red Wings see a ton of value in whatever it is they're trying to get in some sort of a Jonathan Bergen trade, because this is a really valuable young piece. He's versatile, he can play in the lineup, he was already good last year, so the fact that he was even playing in the AHL, you could say, is kind of indignant, because he was already good last year. Why are you demoting him, right? So now, we have this update. It appears that with everything in mind, that he and Zarnik and Zar are going to get called up and playing with the Red Wings in Dallas. Or maybe not playing, per se, but just kind of hovering around there. Maybe the Dylan Larkin stuff from yesterday and beyond is going to influence that. Maybe the David Perron eventual suspension is going to feed into this conversation, too. But either way, the Red Wings are in a very particular spot where all of a sudden, trading young guys trading talented prospects whom Wings fans have seen develop over the years and actually got the luxury of seeing play NHL minutes, they're now trying to trade these guys away. Or maybe not these guys, but one of these guys, and that makes it feel super weird. So there is a conversation going around on social media, Reddit especially, like asking where exactly this is going. Like, what are the Red Wings trying to do here when they're trying to trade away a guy like Jonathan Berggren? Are they going after a Dylan Larkin replacement, assuming he's going to be out for a while? Are they going after a defenseman? Are they going after more wingers? Are they trying to do sort of a future to now type of thing where it's like, okay, we'll sell you on Jonathan Berggren because Berggren at 25, 6, 7 years old is going to be great. Maybe we could trade for a guy that's already good right now, who is a little bit older and maybe a bit more mature so we could try to contend sooner or something like that, right? And even further to that point, another conversation that I had been seeing popping up once in a while was why in the world did this leak? Why is David Pagnota having a source tell him, yeah, Jonathan Bergen's in trade talks? Like, not gonna lie, I'm gonna ask you this. When was the last time we've actually heard rumors about a Red Wings player being on the market and actually have that result in a trade? Like, I don't know about you, but in my opinion, Steve Eiserman has been a vault this entire time he has been the top guy in Detroit. He does not let anything leak. Anybody who is underneath that Eiserman umbrella, their lips are sealed, locked up, throw the key down into the bottom of the ocean, and then incinerate the world and lose all of the atoms involved in making that key within the sands of time. Like, we rarely hear stuff like this. This rarely ever gets out from the Detroit Red Wings. So my question is, where exactly is this coming from, and why is it out there? Because since Stevie Y has had such a strong handle on keeping all of his employees tight-lipped so that nothing leaks out, methinks there's probably some other things going on here that we don't know about. Maybe it's another team. Like, maybe Steve Eiserman is talking to X-Team about Berggren in a trade, and then the X-Team goes out there and leaks to their own agents or media. Hey, yeah, we're talking to Stevie Y about Berggren, and then it eventually finds its way to David Pagnota, right? Maybe there's some sort of other thing going on. Maybe the Red Wings are trying to make a 4D chess type of play. Hey, we're going to leak out Bergeron's name into the media so we can get some more conversations going. Or, I don't know, maybe there's some other objective they're trying to go for by letting this leak. So, I don't know, right? Like, I have such faith and trust in the Steve Eiserman regime into not really letting anything slide that I think it's a super interesting point to bring up how this actually did come out. Other things like, oh, Red Wings signings and whatever, like Patrick Kane coming over to Detroit, that wasn't really a Steve Eiserman is in control type of thing. That was more of a Patrick Kane's agent probably talking to some of these reporters about teams that are involved and other things leaking out there. So it's not really on the wings that everybody knew that he was going to sign with Detroit or that Detroit had a really high chance. But either way, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Red Wings and these trade rumors involving Jonathan Berggren. Do you think he's going to get traded? And if so, where to? What do you think he's worth? And what do you think the Wings should get in return? He's a young guy, still good, still skilled. So I think there's probably a lot to be had here. If at the very least the Red Wings get themselves an asset that is better than a 33rd overall pick or a second round pick from a few years ago, then hey, if you're able to upgrade that to a first round caliber asset, then be my guest, Stevie Y. Just make sure you're not getting robbed here. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Jonathan Bergen trade talks. I hope you enjoyed this British Astros 99. And bye.